Hello, greatness. You are welcome and tuned into Heirs of God TV, perfecting saints to become like Christ. Stay tuned for another inspiring episode from your host. And now, let's welcome Dr. Vincent Alpong. So, in our last lesson from the book, The Way Out, lesson number one, The Law, we came to understand that there is a law. And that law states that whatever you think and hold in consciousness as being so, it manifests itself in your body and in all your affairs. That is the law. But when we were bringing the law part one to a conclusion, we were asked a question. And that question is, if you will, or if you can, you will. Hmm. He said, Surely, you can if you will. And he gave us a very nice um, food for thought, something to think about. And he said, the way you must train yourself is to stand guard continually at the door of your mind and to let in no thoughts or feelings that you do not want to out manifest. Hmm. And that was how we ended the law part one. Today we want to continue and finish the law. So this is the law part two from the book, The Way Out, read by Vincent Upon. Think this over carefully what we just said and you will see that it is the only way Hmm. it may seem hard at first and you may not know what to admit and what to deny but the truth is you must guard the door from every negative thought and feeling of whatsoever nature from every thought that you know God would not have you to think about. From every doubt, every fear, every worry, every anxiety or concern of any kind. From every tendency to criticize, to judge or to condemn anybody. Hmm. To condemn anybody or anything or any condition from self-pity, from jealousy, from envy, from irritation, from unkindness, from anger, from hatred, and all things that are of like manner. He said these will give you an idea of what are negative and ungodlike thoughts and which must no longer have a part in your consciousness. Hmm. If If you will keep all such untrue thoughts out of your mind, you can see that then and then only can your higher self Draw into your mind the true and positive thoughts that will attract to you the good that is waiting to manifest itself to you. (laughs) There is something in my mind, but (laughs) my goodness, you let me just say it. I know that some people might be thinking that, hmm, this book and all the 
other series I've been doing is just talking about um, manifesting and um, is this not the new age and the law of attraction and all of these things. But please, don't be quick to judge. Look at the context and the content of what is being shared and being taught here. Are these not the God-like thoughts? Right? He said, Beloved, think on these things. Think on these things. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is of good report. Are these not the same exact things that is being taught here? Something to think about. So that is an answer to those who feel or is thinking that we are bringing some so-called new age. I don't know, but these books I've been reading to you are books that were written in the early 1900s. So I don't see what is new about them. But anyways, let's get into the text. He said, if you will keep all such untrue thoughts out of your mind, you can see that then and then only can your higher self draw into your mind the true and the positive thoughts that will attract to you the good that is waiting to manifest itself to you. For while your mind is cluttered with all these fearful, worrying, discouraged, sick, weak, poverty-tainted thoughts, how can you expect anyone who feels these vibrations and vibrations are the things you cannot cover up to be attracted to you? Or how can you expect even God himself to inspire you with thoughts of beneficial nature? It is not possible. In fact, such negative thoughts actually keep away the things you are longing to have manifest in your life. For like will always attract the like. Hmm. My goodness. Think, beloved, poverty-stricken thoughts do not attract prosperity or jobs. Sick thoughts do not build a healthy consciousness, my goodness. And believe that you are a failure will definitely invite failure. You say this all sounds good, but when one is sunk so deep in conditions that no matter which way he turns, he sees only sickness and hunger and poverty and failure facing him despite months of effort to conquer the condition, to get work or to do something to tide over till better days come. How is he to think of anything else but the weak? and the poverty, and the lack, and the failure, and the sickness. How can he think of anything else? Yes, my dear friend, we see that you are up against something that might look powerful and beyond you. But we also see that you are caught fast between the horns of a dilemma. You have sought help from the world of men, Maliko Savila, and it has turned you down. You have exhausted all the forces of self, my goodness, and you admit that you are completely helpless. Hmm. And perhaps you have even prayed to God and seemingly he has not heard or he has not answered you yet. But where is this God to whom you have prayed, Maliga Sephanias? Is he somewhere up in the skies or in some hazy place that you know not where? Kefiras. 
Have you prayed to God within you? Have you turned there and opened up your heart to him? Deep within yourself in the kingdom where your higher self abides. If not, my dear friend, then after reading this article carefully until you truly get its full meaning for you, pray to him there. Mm. Get down on your knees and in deep and true humility pour out your heart unto him. Knowing that he as your higher self hears you. And he does know that you have need of all these things. And that he will answer you. Go back to those words in the Sermon on the Mount and read them over and over again and again until you get all of their wondrous meaning and realize that they are meant for you. And that they are a definite promise made by the Master to you that if you do, that if you will do, what you are there told to do. The Father will give you all things that you need. Think, 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 my dear friend, think. This is Jesus' promise to you, and therefore it will be fulfilled if and only if you do your part. And I believe that you can do it. You can do it. You must do it if you would have the blessings which he promises you and which he promised you when you say that you can have an abundance of all good things and that you can be free from the dominance of man- money forever. Mm. And what must you do? What must you do? You must not be anxious or worry anymore about what you shall eat or drink or what you shall wear. For your loving Father knows that you must have all these things. Malemosia. But if you will seek first his kingdom, that is his consciousness. Where you must sting only his thoughts for you, as we have shown you how to do. And then will do what he tells you to do when his thoughts come into your mind. He will provide you with the good things he has had in store for you from the beginning. Let me pause and break this thing down for a minute to help somebody. What we are communicating here is that we are not saying that there is no God. No. What we are communicating here is that the God that you are believing into to bring an answer and help to you has said it categorically and emphatically that his dwelling place is in man. My goodness. His dwelling place is in man and with man. He said, I will make my abode with you. Right. He said, do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. And the moment we come into that place of consciousness that God's abode is with man, everything changes. We begin to turn to ourselves. And again, not because we are rejecting the fact and the truth that God is out there. But we believe that his abode is with man. And if so, then I will yield to the consciousness of the God who is in me. For it is he that worketh in me both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. In other words, God wants to bring something to this world. 
and that which he wants to bring to the world. One, to set people free and two, to bless the one through whom he came out is to be able to allow ourselves to capture the mind of God. And when we are able to do that, he said that we will enjoy the blessing of God. That is what we are trying to communicate. So just to clear the airwaves and be a blessing to the body of Christ without um, creating any conflict in our minds. That's why I have taken a moment to break this thing down. So permit me, we have a few, um, a few paragraphs and we will be done with the law. Thank you, Jesus. He said, we know that we are, we know that we are telling you to do what now seems almost impossible. But my dear friend, this is the only way to win these blessings. And you say you will do anything to obtain them if it is humanly possible. And I want you to know that this is humanly possible because man is the abode of the Godhead. It is not only possible but it is the very thing that is ordained and intended for you by your higher self. Or he would not have brought this message to you and placed this ultimatum hmm, so squarely before you. You have tried your way. You have tried the world's way. You have tried the way you have been taught. But my question is, have you tried the way of the gods? My goodness. Have you tried the way of God? And now you are given the opportunity to try God's way. The way laid out for you in the beginning. Can you not see that it is the only way out for you? Thus, God brings his children that love him finally to realize that they cannot serve both God and mammon. Hmm. For they must be shown or they for they must be shown or that they are serving mammon just as much by fearing him and yielding to the power of be money hmm. as they would be by openly worshipping money and becoming a slave when having great quantities of it. They must be made to see that by fearing money's seeming power, they are making it first and God second in, in on their lives. And until they truly want to serve God more than any other thing, and prove it by their right thinking, speech, and action, they are not yet where the help of God can reach them. And so, there is an ultimatum. For he would not have brought this message to you and place his ultimatum before you. And that brings us to the end of the law, part two. Now, the next lesson will be the ultimatum. I'll see you in the next lesson. And please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on becoming all you were born to be. God bless you. Please like, share, add your comments to it. And I'll see you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Heirs of God TV. 
perfecting saints to become like Christ. Thanks for tuning in and please don't forget to subscribe, like and share, and turn on the notification so you don't miss out on becoming all you were born to be.